guys, welcome back to The Wild Robot. We're on chapter 46, titled The Spring. With each passing day, the sun climbed a little higher and its rays grew a little warmer. The last patch of snow melted away and the color returned to the land. The pasture, the fields, the trees, they all were turning bright green and the air slowly filled with the fresh smells of spring. Many of the cows had been steadily growing bigger. And now calving season had arrived. When the time was right, each cow went out into the pasture so her calf could be born in the soft grass. The robot stood nearby just in case anyone needed her help, but nobody ever did. Even the first time mothers knew what to do instinctively, and soon baby calves were frolicking around the farm. Spring was a happy, exciting time, and yet Rose was distracted. More and more, she found herself looking to the skies, hoping to see Bright Bill and his flock. She knew they were on their way. Chapter 47, The Dinner. Mr. Sharif hopped out of the truck with his arms full of shopping bags. He limped toward the farmhouse, dragging his leg in the usual way, and then he fell. Rose ran over and found the man sprawled on the driveway. Groceries scattered around him. Are you okay? She said, pulling him to his feet. I'm fine, he grumbled. Rose started picking up the groceries and said, let me help you get inside. A minute later, the two of them were stepping into the house. Jackets and hats were hung from pegs on the walls. Shoes were lined up beneath a bench. The man peeled off his boots and hollered, Kids, it's time to cook dinner. Footsteps pounded across the ceiling and the children came flying down the staircase with their dog. Is Rose having dinner with us? asked Jaya. Rose doesn't eat, said Jad. I know that, but she could still sit with us. How about it, Rose? Did Mr. Sharif care to join us for dinner? The robot stared at the family, and the family smiled at the robot. What would you like me to do? said Rose. In a very proper voice, Jad said, it would greatly, I would greatly enjoy the pleasure of your company for dinner. In a very proper voice, Jaya said, I order you to stay for dinner. The children didn't wait for a response. They snatched the groceries from Rose and scampered off. Oscar ran after them, barking. Is that food? It smells like food. I want food. Is that food? Yum, yum, yum. I love food. The wooden floor creaked as Rose followed Mr. Sharif through the living room. A comfy chair and a sofa faced a darkened electronic screen. Above the fireplace hung a painting of a familiar old barn. Doorways led to other rooms. Rose glanced into Mr. Sharif's office and saw a portrait of his family, including his wife. Mrs. Sharif was pretty with dark, curly hair and a big smile. It was the same smile Rose saw on the children. Look, Jay is crying like a baby, came Jad's giggly voice from the kitchen. When Rose walked in, the girl was chopping an onion with tears stream streaming down her cheeks. Rose, I order you to, to chop this onion for me, said Jaya, wiping her eyes. The robot picked up the knife, and in a flash, the onion was perfectly chopped and dumped into a bowl. Clearly, Rose was designed to chop onions. Rose, I order you to take the night off, Mr. Sharif laughed. The kids and I want to cook. We enjoy it. More vegetables were chopped, skillets started sizzling, delicious aromas swirled together, and before long, a magnificent meal was set on the dinner table. Oscar positioned himself below to catch food scraps, and everyone else took a seat. Mr. Sharif turned to his daughter. Would you like to say grace? The girl lowered her head. Thank you, God, for this yummy food. We're about to gobble down. Amen. Thank you, Jaya, Mr. Sharif said with a wink. And thank you, Rose, for everything you've done this past year. I had my doubts, but now I can't imagine what we'd do without you. The children looked at each other. Then the family grabbed their knives and forks and dug into dinner. A colorful leafy salad, a, plas uh, a plate of sautéed asparagus, creamy mashed potatoes, and buttered bread in a tall glass of milk. The meal was beautiful. As Rose scanned the table, her eyes returned to the roasted chicken. It was about the size of Bright Bill. Suddenly, the robot was full of questions. Do chickens live happy lives? Did this chicken know it would be eaten? Were humans bad for eating animals? No, 
thought Rose. Humans are simply following their instincts like all creatures, like Rose herself. At least the Sharifs honored this animal by giving thanks and by turning it into a beautiful, nourishing meal. finished eating, Mr. Sharif stepped out of the room, and he returned a moment later carrying a violin and a bow. Growing up, I dreamed of being a musician, he said, thumping the back of his chair. He tuned the instrument, put it under his chin, and started to play. His bow glided back and forth, his fingers danced across the strings, and a lovely old folk song filled the room. Mr. Sharif tapped his foot as the notes rang out, soft and then loud, soft then slow and fast, slow and then fast. The song ended with a flourish and the music faded to silence. When he rested the violin on his knee, he said, this instrument has been in our family a very long time, since the days when Cyrus Sharif first built the farm. Cyrus Sharif, Rose knew that name. She unpacked, I'm sorry, she unsnapped a pocket in her tool belt and pulled out the small journal. I discovered this in the old barn, she said, handing it over. The children huddled around their father as he took the journal. They read their ancestors' names on the cover. Their ancestors' name on the cover. Then they carefully opened it and turned the brittle pages. I've never seen this journal before, said Mr. Sharif. It's a piece of our family history. Kids, look at how they used to milk cows. Rose left the Sharifs like that, examining the journal, learning about their family history. But what about their family's future? Their lives were difficult and they needed help. And Rose was about to run away forever. As she marched back to the barn that night, the robot felt something like worry and confusion and guilt. And we'll continue with chapter 48 next time.